Eguardión, Eguardión de Nori. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to make my presentation in Castellano. Good afternoon, everyone. Más que nada porque quiero que me entiendan y mi inglés todavía es un poco básico. Since I don't speak English, I think I rather speak Spanish. Bueno, en primer lugar quisiera agradecer a a IFIC la oportunidad que nos da el departamento y a Sakidecha de presentar aquí esta tarde el trabajo que venimos realizando en los últimos años, casi diez años, en atención integrada. Eh, agradecer también a Maya y a Tony su presentación y, como no, decir que estoy encantado de compartir con Nuria eh, esta mesa hoy o este, este plenario porque eh, juntos también trabajamos en el primer proceso de integración que, que se dio aquí en, en Euskadi, en, la, en concreto en la, en la OSU Vidasoa. Eh, mi, mi, mi exposición va a bajar un poco al terreno del operativo. No había hablado de, de grandes conceptos, conceptos muy globales. Y yo voy a intentar dar respuesta a algunos de los interrogantes que ha puesto o sobre los que ha basado su exposición, eh, dar la respuesta que hemos intentado dar eh, humildemente en el País Vasco, porque, eh, como verán, es un proceso muy complejo, eh, muy largo. Y Uncompleted, a long way ahead of us, even though we feel we've achieved significant results. So, again, as I said, I will go down towards a specific in a European region, that's the Basque Country, with over two million inhabitants, with a high level of financial um, devol devolution. So, uh, part of the budget has been used to move towards public health and social care, which is public, universal, and high quality. And that way, we've reoriented our system towards uh, integrated care here in the Basque country. My lecture will be broken down into two. First, I'll try to explain how we've changed this um, healthcare system, the delivery system in the Basque country. And then I will focus on complex patients, as it is the topic for integrated care. Well, there's no news here, but uh, that's a, as good a starting point as any other. And this is the challenge we all have, adjacent countries as well, the demographic challenge, sustainability challenge as well, because of the aging, which is known as a pandemic now, and something very common, which we used to have and still have, uh, especially I'm referring to the first decade of the century, 2000. 2010. It was a fragmented care. Uh, we would have primary care, um, secondary health care, and then mental health. I think it's twice as fragmented as I describe it because social services report to other organizations. For us, we have the regional government in the territory and the city councils. So the municipalities, they all report to this both too. So twice as fragmented and a bit more complex when trying to move it forward, uh, to, uh, to forward towards uh, integrated care and health and social care. And there is this other challenge, which is sustainable. Well, what I mean here is we want new technologies, ICTs, and have them embedded into the delivery system. Because I feel this is the huge uh, challenge that we will have the largest, to be honest. And sometimes the demographic challenge somehow covers or hides this other problem that we, public services, will have to face undoubtedly in upcoming years. This fragmented system, or a system broken down into three levels, meant that as part of the chronicity strategy, that we try to move forward, trying to solve fragmentation through integration of different institutions. Specifically, we made quite an effort to try and develop an integrated healthcare organization, which is Pirasoa, and that would be combining together a hospital and the outpatient clinics. So instead of having two different organizations, they would be just one. With this initiative, we were first focused on smaller regions, first Vidasoa, and then three more. 
Pero I was there. But I would say that what's most important from a strategic point of view would be the decision by John de Gaulle, the uh, regional minister, to move forward, to push forward this change to, for, for all of us. For Sakidesha, the idea was to change it all as a whole, to have this integrated delivery of care and not just limited to smaller regions or small outpatient clinics or hospitals. I felt this is quite a change that was adopted at the highest level for the bus government. And then in 2013, some processes for vertical integration of organizations are started as part of a slow but continuous process that lasted till some two years ago, where the healthcare system here in the Basque country well, has been transformed, starting from primary care and hospital organizations into 13 healthcare integrated organizations, as well as, as mental health, which also has some integrating elements, but it's not yet been fully integrated, at least we have not taken that step and have it integrated into OSS. Probably that's the idea, keeping mental health services as a priority for our best government strategies. So this is a vertical integration model. This is a transformation model which purpose ultimate goal was to facilitate. This structural um, facilitation or integration was never the goal of the health department. The idea was rather to identify other elements, to avoid fragmentation in outpatient care and hospital care, avoiding or ditching classical problems such as resistance from organizations that actually need to converse and understand each other so that they would adjust to the new healthcare system and the demographic challenges posed by aging and comorbidity. The how we did it, how we moved forward to facilitate integrated care, well, there were three pillars, so to say. First, we define integrated care as a concept, so it's a field definition, then a reference framework for its development, and then a roadmap, a roadmap to help organizations, integrated organizations, to move forward with integrated care. As a field definition, this is the one we chose. It could have been any, because there are so many, as you probably know. Um, well, we decided we were very much interested in this one. Because the message was based on two elements we found were key. First, it is a collective project of collaboration amongst professionals. Professionals who work on a care process and whose decisions are dependent. So whatever someone does has an influence on the results of these, the next professional and especially in the results of patients. And then finally, the next key word would be coordination amongst professionals. And this is a call for cooperation as part of the public health care system, but also with social services. So these are three key words that help us convey a message that Nuria referred to earlier on throughout all integrated health care organizations in the Basque country. So as a reference framework, we decided to use this one here, which somehow highlights the three main elements or changes sought after by this model, delivery model. First, change in culture and values or mindset. So this is what's typical of a fragmented system. And now it should be a cooperation amongst professionals. Secondly, changes in the governance model in order to make sure that we have integrated care and then focusing on population instead so that we move forward towards the true essence of integrated care, which is productive interactions amongst proactive professionals, and proactive is the key word here, and patients that are more and more empowered and informed. And with all of this, patient would stay down at the lowest complexity level and with the best results possible. So it's a people center, a patient center care. Third basic element here in the transformation 
information model was a roadmap, a roadmap that would set out the changes that were needed as part of this component that came hand in hand with the program contract or contract program as a regulatory tool for planning in the healthcare department and the delivery system. So this is a tool devised for the deployment of integrated care to sign or point out the change and changes needed for clinical management, organizational structure, and so many other things that we've been working on in recent years. So, vertical integration in the Basque country has had a purpose, a goal that is facilitating integrated care. It's just been a methodology. Working methodology might not have been a radical change, uh, as the one that Nuria mentioned, but it is significant enough in the way we structure services and delivery. And there are two driving ideas here uh, for healthcare and healthcare model. First and foremost, this is a patient centered care, but they are empowered. And this is also based on the cooperation amongst professionals to achieve the best result. And as part of this change, we have used several levers, and, and I, guess, uh, I guess throughout the conference there will be several interventions that we'll discuss them, but i like to highlight it now, because then later on well, I will show you a few more change levers. First, the political and strategic decision itself, I feel it was a decisive element for uh, this bet on integrated care, and then message through that program in order to move the management towards several organizations and monitor and keep track of the change as well. Then the e-records, medical records, that way we could have that exchange of information amongst professionals and that is also helping us use cooperation, collaboration as a lever so that we have that collaboration with social services as well as specific um, actions for patient empowerment. I guess this has been significant changing levers. And as part of this process, this idea of monitoring and assessment as another lever, another driver, it is so complicated as the development of integrated care itself. It is an assessment which um, nowadays I feel it's not yet complete. We've not made enough progress in the way we assess integration. And yet there are three items I'd like to highlight. First and foremost, assessment of integration as an evolution of the healthcare system, a maturity of the system, and so within it we can have integrated get developed. And then a performance assessment, an assessment on the results and the outcome of that integrated care system. I would say we in the Basque country, we try to see whether we have a more mature system for the development of integrated care. And in that regard, we can use those indicators that refer to performance and the healthcare system. But there are some other methods to approach assessments such as maturity assessment for the healthcare system to see to what extent it is mature enough in order to develop several uh, integrated care actions and as well as focus group groups where we ask professionals how we are doing on progress. All right. As, as indicators, we have so many. Here we have some results that we are considering in the Basque country. Uh, well, in themselves mean nothing, but yet I've included here the most important indicator when seeing the result of integrated care, and that is how the rate of admissions has evolved when it has to do with outpatient care. So these are potentially avoidable. And in the Basque country, there is a downward trend. And so since 2003 till um, current times, uh, obviously, there are much, there's much to argue here to see whether integrated care has managed uh, to achieve this result. As you can see here, 
on the graph, the trends stay stable, but then without integrated care, the graph might have had the uh, same trend, maybe not, who knows. And this is our problem with assessment because we've changed the whole healthcare system as a whole. So we find it very difficult to have this comparison. Maybe in the near future, some other regions in the state might be used as a comparison. But it is true, though, that in other regions, they're developing integration strategies. We could also discuss other kinds of indicators, such as the rate of readmissions to hospital, which indicate whether the uh, patient, when they leave hospital, they are uh, actually cared for in primary care. And as you can see, the evolution has been stable in recent years, which is not good nor bad in itself, because it is thought that, well, we have more complex and aged patients every time. So keeping them, keeping it stable is not such bad news. Haven't found any changes in the reference center, or rather the rate of referrals from primary care to tertiary care. But it is true, though, that they've developed so many more contacts between and well, rather all online contacts uh, for professionals, mainly because of uh, these uh, technological evolution. We've seen quite a change in the access to the health uh, range of portfolio. That would mean an empowerment of patients in the Basque country. Somehow, around 25% they are interacting with the system through the healthcare folder and they can have uh, information on care processes. We could keep on discussing indicators and performance, and that would leave us, give us the clues to see whether integrated care is getting the results um, to improve these kind of indicators. But I don't think that's the most important part. Probably what's most important is moving on to other kinds of responses and see how it's evolved in its maturity and after a vertical integration process and working around um, integrated healthcare organizations. Well, it's been a long eight year, well, an eight year long process and we need to know whether we have a more mature healthcare system now which would evidence that we've um, moved forward in integrated care. Well, this maturity model can be a good tool. As you can see, I've referred to the hard work of key people coming from 12 different countries. Looking into the maturity of a system, that would be 12 uh, key components in itself is a good roadmap. I would compare it with the work we've done with uh, the program because it actually focuses on the key elements in order to make progress towards uh, integrated care. And as Nuria said, We've been part of the Shiraka project with Chronic Gune, which is our research uh, institute for healthcare services. We are actually moving forward in so many elements, and it could become another driving force in order to transform the healthcare system and keep on moving on towards uh, research. And, and this is just the picture, so to say, that we got from the Shiraka project about the maturity of the healthcare system in the Basque Country. This is self-assessment by key players in the Basque Country, giving us an idea of the prep degree or the maturity in the Basque Country for the practice in our implementation of integrated care action. So you can see it full, half full or half empty. Well, I see it half full. We have a mature system well, sufficiently mature, that is, to move forward uh, with integrated care. Naturally, this is just a recent picture. This is now where we started in 2010. I'm sure that this very same exercise back in 2010, the picture would have been closer to the beginning from scratch or, or back to uh, this is square one rather so th this is reason for hope and I say that we are down the right path uh, in integrated care as for focus group groups uh, let me highlight just three items and I think it has to do with a uh, very same thing and this is just 
has to do with what we've been doing, and professionals say we've been doing. These were focus groups with doctor, physicians and nurses in both care levels. And they say that the electronic systems have been paramount for integrated care facilitation, and they also refer that the referral internist role that we've developed for the system, well, it's been four years now, and I would say that this is well recognized for its potential for integrated care. And they bring us down to earth as well, because the development of what I'm saying has not been equally done in every organization. And there are several approaches in, in primary care, which is a problem, because as said by Nuria before, this is basic for the development of integrated care, or one of the basic elements, insofar it should be driving the integrated care systems. Oops. All right. And, well, at this point, I will focus on complex patients. And I do it the other way around this time. We'll start with the assessment and indicators, and then we move on to some ideas on how we've deployed it, what are the most important elements in the deployment of um, complex chronic patient care in the Basque Country. Indicators, just one, one, because I think it shows perfectly well the spirit of what we want for complex patients. We want those patients that at some point will have to be admitted. That's why they are complex. We want them most of the time to be nicely managed at the outpatient clinic, so primary care that is, and whenever they are admitted, they do so in a planned way, meaning that if you have a patient admitted in a planned way, making sure that there is no visit to the emergency department, because it's always complicated. For those patients, we, well, we have the professionals keeping an eye. They see whether there is any improvement, any changes, and they talk to the hospital so that the patient goes into hospital in a planned way for stabilization processes. This is what we've seen as an evolution, as a trend. I find it is important because it points out that we are doing things right with complex patients. Same way as before, I refer to the maturity of a system, and well, for longer now, it's been from the beginning of the first OSIS, uh, we've uh, looked into the maturity of different organizations when deploying these uh, Wagner model, because we find this is a reference in order to work all six elements highlighted by the model. As you can see on the screen, with several assessments, we've enlarged this web or network as part of the organization. This is one single organization. This one is Asev Birasawa and how they move forward in the management of chronic patients and how much they've learned along the way as the years come back. And as far as um, people-centered care is concerned, and so focus groups I refer to, how important medical records are, and internet as well, there's two elements, maturity of the system and indicators as the one uh, I've shared. And we see that it has to do with the deployment of the strategies for chronic patients. Well, all those approaches cannot highlight the wealth and variety of experiences developed in all 13 healthcare integrated uh, organizations in the Basque Country. I dare say there are 13 organizations, and we had 13 different integrated care programs for the management of. Uh, complex patients. And this is another pulley for change with this framework and the program. But top down, we have this idea of changes and structural changes and what was expected. But then bottom up, the other way around, we got local initiatives, very interesting ones, helped us understand as a group. How am I doing on time? Well, I brought two experiences here, highlighting common elements. Not all experiences, not all 13 integrated plans include those elements. Well, they do in some cases with a greater or lower deal of intensity, but I would identify them as common. 
first certification of population in order to identify complex patients, which is based in the case mix of uh, the outpatient care rules. And we've been working with that since 2018. And it simplifies those patients or identify those patients that are most complex in the system based on looking into their experiences, previous experiences in the healthcare system. Then we have clinical certification, and so clinicians let us know as well. Well, rather, that's a computer that has not been able to identify. And the other way around, they would say that some patients identified by the certification system are not as complex as we could think a priori. Certification on the one hand, and then new roles, professional roles. And here, let me highlight the referral internist um, physician, and then the case nurses and the liaison nurses. The, uh, the, this uh, could be further discussed. But these are new roles, helping us understand, do things differently as well. By building those assistential pathways, collaborative and sharing-based, and especially patient-centered, with first level and second level professionals. Then there's these shared elements, and is the fact that we have customized care plans and a single um, medical record registry, including prescriptions, which is very much uh, appreciated by professionals because it makes transformation of the care process easier. I had two experiences. I bring two experiences well known, the first one, Care World Project. There were f six organizations, one of which was Control, and this highlighted how important systematic approach, systematized approach of uh, complex chronic patients is. With all those common elements developed systematically, we realized we could reduce the, num the rate of admissions in a statistically significant percentage. And we could bring down the number of admissions in those that had to be admitted. Oh, it won't go. Well, this other, this is p-value. And so it, it somehow highlighted that uh, there was a larger burden or payload for GPs, uh, contrary to all other professionals. But with the other experience, I will explain why. So, this is about experiences uh, for complex chronic patient care, showing it is important as long as we reduce the number of admissions. And let me say that the control group was not doing as we were doing back in the 2000s. And it, it had customized, rather integrated care which was modified as part of the OSE, but with a different approach, not the systematized approach that uh, we were following. Then there's this other experience that I wanted to share, and it's been explained here. Vidasoa experience another way of getting organized and having this complex chronic patient treatment with this unit for continuum of care, working with uh, family doctors, nurses, managing nurses, and also social workers. Every internist at the hospital, well, they work with just one outpatient clinic, and every day with um, patients that had been admitted and patients that are complex patients, again, outpatient clinics, and they are in touch with uh, GPs on the pho over the phone and also face-to-face -face once a month. So another way of approaching complex chronic patient management, well, this is a different one, but very interesting as well. This is the assessment model that is a bit different from the previous one. The previous one was a control group and an intervention group, and here what we have is an experience before being included into this organizational model. Patients um, 
if complex. Well, here they had 334 complex patients, 456 admissions, and once admitted to the uh, continuum of care unit, and once we had all the resources to focus on their needs, the number of admissions went down to 336. So you see there is a favorable variation or a positive trend uh, when it comes to these patients. Once, as it's been said some other times, once the patient is in our under our radar and we can respond meet their needs in a simpler way, in a basic way for primary care. That's where we need to work with patients uh, insofar as possible. And this very same comparison gives us a different picture, so a different snapshot of the paid load for these uh, primary care services. It is obvious that before and after working with the customized management plans, well, that's when the nursing services take up a significant role. The GP role goes up just slightly, but what really increases is the nursing activity for home visits and phone calls as well. This is an analysis. This is a before and after. Well, probably this effect was not noticed because the organization as control was already having a proactive activity on complex patients. This is another interesting result. So these are these are complex patients. Laura. So this is uh, where we work together with the Basque Country, and this is another idea for change. So we move on from common elements. From uh, so we're moving now to a common or shared roadmap for the whole healthcare system in the Basque Country, and so this would be a care pathway for uh, patients with several diseases shared by all 13 integrated uh, organizations. So best practices that we've seen in two organizations are now being scaled up to other organizations with these features. And so we define positions and roles for every stage along the way and with these other kind of elements that are part of uh, the intervention. Probably you cannot see with such a small print, but these are the different stages of the itinerary that we will now be scaling up to all integrated care facilities and somehow highlight the role of every professional along the care process. Just two more words on the main items here. First, we are at a turning point in, in the Basque Country because we see this uh, change of generation. So we are very much interested in reinforcing primary care because that's the way to move forward, as I said before. And the next step would be having a care itinerary for all the institutions in the Basque Country. So next, what we have to do is to, to develop individualized care plans that are part of the itinerary and scaling it up to all organizations. And we're talking with Kleine Gune as well. And I hope that as part of a conference in the future, we will be able to share the results. Thank you to you all.